thank you for joining me in yet another amazing episode that we've been having here. We are learning new things about web design and some of the tips to consider, especially as a beginner in web design. Building websites is an amazing thing and it's also a solution that many people would like for their businesses to be exposed to the world so that their businesses can be able to be seen. Their organizations require visibility online. So this is a skill that everybody, I believe, everybody needs to be able to learn so that they can understand how websites really operate. WordPress is a content management system that is easy to navigate. It's very easy to use. It doesn't have any, any coding that is required, especially as a beginner. You can just drag and drop depending on the page builder that you're using. So today, I'm going to be showing you something that is very important so that you can be able to know as a beginner in web design. The main issue is how do you choose a theme that you want to use? What are the things you need to consider when you are selecting a theme for the website that you have been approached to by a client? Maybe you're building for yourself, like which theme best suits you? And I will give you the principles that you're supposed to follow so that you can be able to to choose wisely, select a theme that is going to be able to communicate your message to your audience and your information is going to be packaged in a very simplified manner. So one of the things that you need to look out in is the website purpose. What purpose is this particular website going to serve? Do you want to build a website so that you can be able to sell products? Do you want to build a website so that you can be able to build credibility to your audience? Do you want to build a website so that you can be able to maybe uh, market, like get more people to subscribe to some sort of services that you are, you are offering? You're not selling a product, you're actually offering a service. So you want many people to subscribe to your, to your, to your service. Do you want to build a website to to provide news for people. So the purpose of that particular website that you want, that idea that you want the website to serve, that is what is very important. We have websites that are different. The theme that you select for a newspaper is very different from the theme that you will select for a non-governmental organization. So if you have even a theme that you select for a portfolio is also different from the theme that you, you will make for um, maybe an online store. So that purpose is very important. You should, from the beginning, when you have a profile for the business or organization, or the idea of what you're trying to communicate, define the purpose. The other thing is target audience, like who are you trying to meet? So you have to be, if you see that this is the trend that is also in the market, and people are actually subscribing to that kind of, because of the way it's packaged, so you should be able to also look out for that kind of a thing. So your audience is important in terms of their location, in terms of, you know, sometimes you might build, you might get a theme that is so heavy for your website to, to load. You know, you want to have a theme that is light so that you can be able, whether, you, whether the, your audience has little internet, they can be able to visit the site. It doesn't take long to load. Before you select a theme, you need to look at the speed of that. Uh, what kind of packages, what kind of plugins, what kind of requirements are needed needed to run that particular thing. Is it compatible with your server? Like, can your server handle that kind of a thing? There's a way that you can be able to gauge and, 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 and move around with it. The other thing is desired features. What features would you want to incorporate in that particular website? What features do you want to put? Cells, the same, same thing, the purpose. So features and purpose are actually going like hand in hand. You want a specific feature that is in that theme because that is the feature that you are prioritizing in a website. Is the theme is the is the theme having like for example, a Shopify theme? You know, Shopify feature like WooCommerce. Does it have a feature whereby you can be able to customize and incorporate payment systems? Is it able to localize the payment systems that are in your locality? Because right now we have Stripe, which is good, but Stripe is not good for Africans, you know, it's not good for African continent because uh, you have to register that business somewhere else in the States and then you have to, but we have other alternatives like Flutterweb, which can be able to do that. 
if you go to India and those Asian countries, you have Reza Pay and those other things. So is it able, are you able to localize that payment system on that particular website? So if the theme is able to be customized enough to cater for this, then you can select that particular theme. So the other thing we have is called design style. Design style is all about your audience. If your audience like this kind of a design, go with it. For you to know that your audience like that kind of a design, you should be able to have done a proper sampling or mapping of the type of audience you're looking for, the, what they like, like the preferences when they go online. Do they like funky kind of websites? Do they like simple kind of websites? Also, the type of colors, you need to have, you need to be able to align them with your brand, brand colors. So if it's a difficult thing, because I know me personally, I've encountered difficulties sometimes working with certain paid builders on WordPress. And that's why I can be able to tell you that when you select a good theme, it shouldn't be able to give you a hard time when you're trying to customize. When you're trying to customize the colors, the styling, when you're trying to customize it to, fit, to meet the specific features that you would like to. If I get a theme that has been built by somebody else, I need to be able to understand how to navigate it and customize it so that it can be able to fit the type of client that I've already have been, been approached by. The other thing is responsiveness. Is your theme only usable on computers or can it also be accessible on mobile phones? And the appearance, how it, how it re responds with the different kind of screens is essential. If your website is not responsive enough, to fit certain devices that it is, you are losing out on your audience because maybe your audience are usually on smartphones. They are not usually on computers. They don't have time for computers, maybe. But they usually on their smartphones and they want to place an order for something. Do they have to really go and look for a laptop and start booking? Or can they just have a mobile phone and go to that particular domain and then place an order? So if your site is not responsive, you will be losing out on this kind of of, of audience so that's very important the customization i will not speak a lot on this because it is essential is it able to be customized can you remove some 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 of the features and then add others that you would like is it are you able to change even the fonts are you able to even re replace the images are you able to replace the media content that is there are you able to replace the content that is done there if it is able to be customized then that is good if it's these kind of things are, are going to be good, then that is essential for you. Another thing you need to look at is the performance, the performance which helps with search engine optimization for your website to rank faster. It has to be to rank higher. It has to be able to be loaded faster. If it is slow, then the reach, you know, Google has a way of, of ranking your site and it's all about performance. If the performance of your site is lagging behind, then you, you are on a big challenge. You cannot be able to rank better. Even if you have a unique name, you will be still having a challenge. When you look at, you know, I said earlier, the other thing that you need to also look at is the developer's reputation. When you go to any marketplace like Envato or Theme Forest or all those other things, you need to look at the credibility of this kind of a developer. Do they have reviews? If their reviews are low, do they, how, how responsive are they? For example, you bought a theme from them and then you, you encountered a problem and then you went to comment that, about that problem and then they never replied to you. you know, those are, that's, those are def, difficult developers. You shouldn't be able to get things from those kind of people. Despite the fact that those designs are really outstanding, if their response nature to comments or feedback is not really in time, then you are having, you, 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 you are, you are on, a, on, on a challenge, you're getting a challenge to get the best design. So the developer's reputation is very important also because it helps build the credibility because some of these themes are usually updated. Does this person keep updating that design? So when the design is maybe there is the first version, the second version, so do they usually update it when you, when you, when you look at that marketplace? If they, are, they keep on updating it, then their, repre their reputation, their reputation is, <laughs> if they keep on updating it, then their reputation is 
better and you should be able to buy from them. The other thing that you need to also look at is the budget part of it. Is it the theme for free or is it paid? And I'll give you one, one pro tip. When you go to Envato Market, you will find a theme that if you have a subscription with Envato elements, you can be able to get that theme. But if you go to Envato Market, you pay for that theme, but every time they will be updating it, you will be able to get that particular latest update. When you go on the other, the other, uh, the other hand, you'll get it at, at a cheaper, not even cheaper, because you already paid an annual fee, for example. So Envato Elements has that possibility for you to get themes, even it feels like you're getting it for free, but it's not really for free, because you already paid for it, right? The same, same theme can be maybe $79 on Envato Market, but here, because you've subscribed on Envato Elements at, a pre, at an annual fee, you can be able to download that particular theme. With this, I believe it's a guided summary that will be able to help you to build websites that you actually desire for your clients. See you in the next episode.